Previously on the Adventure Zone. The fifth grand relic, the temporal chalice, or chalice, Ah. depending on just sort of what region you're from. We discovered this anomaly several weeks ago. It is it is a force field. This town, just to kind of give you an idea of the aesthetic, is very old western. And it says on this gate, by their sacrifice, our home is made safe. And this statue depicts three figures. It's a small human girl. She is holding hands with a large, broad, bearded human man. This figure standing behind them is wearing a robe, a bright crimson red. Oh. Uh, I'm called Roswell. Ooh, great. Is Roswell the name of you, the bird, or the, the, the big fella that you're riding on? I don't see why it's important that you distinguish between the two. Have you heard the word of Pan today? No, what's a Pan? It is an explosion. You see smoke coming through the windows of the bank. As the clock strikes noon and you're being crushed by the shattered earth as it it compresses down into the ground and all three of you have died. And you see that old woman again. You'll have to do much better than that, loves. Okay, campers, rise and shine. And don't forget your booties, because it's cold out there today. It's the Adventure Zone. You wake up, and you're not dead anymore. Hooray, if, if you yay, were, if, we did it. If you were dead, you were dead for just a, just a bit, just a second. Um, but you've woken up from that white space, and you are laying on the ground. And when you look up, there's refuge, and it's undestroyed. We did you, it. <laughs> you did in a, in a very circuitous way, I guess, save the town. Um but you're, you're another like, victory for the for the uh, we don't have a cool nickname, do we? We really need a cool nickname. I yeah. also I also don't think another works. What about the thrifty three? That doesn't make any sense. Oh. Trace horny boys. Yeah. Uh, that, Trace horny boys. Never say, no one say that aloud ever again, please. Well, no. Trace horny boys. You don't want to say that aloud That's, again. Uh, it's un, uh, it's unfortunate, Justin. Everything you say on this show becomes canon. Okay. Um, Trace Horny Boys, you've woken up and there's refuge. It's not destroyed. You're in front of the entry gate where you woke up yesterday, I guess. And standing under that gate is a big red clay animated earth elemental onion knight uh, with a bird on its shoulder who says... Now, do we still remember everything that happened? Good you question. Last you absolutely remember everything that happened. And this uh, Roswell says... Hello, visitors. Please identify yourselves. Hello, Roswell. Uh, not much time to talk. We're here for an appointment with Sheriff Isaac. How did you know? Uh, do you think you could? How did Sorry. You, how did you know my name and Sheriff Isaac's name? Sheriff <sighs> Isaac. We spoke with him beforehand, uh, and he uh, imported us to uh, come here. He helped open the way, and he would like us to uh, 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 meet with him at the, the sheriff's office, if you could take us there. We did it on LinkedIn. I would like everyone to know, while this is happening, Magnus is just, like, slowly what? turning and staring at Taco. <laughs> this is the most competent thing Taco has done. Why don't you make a... This would be a charisma check. Let me consult the list of skills oh, no, to figure out which not one. not that! <laughs> Any skill but that! And Griffin, oh, is, there, is there a metric like there was in 4th edition where we can, like, assist in a check... Can we be charismatic with Taco with lots of smiles and winking? Uh, I, you can, uh, I mean, I mean, if you can come up with a way narratively to do so, I might give Taco, uh, advantage. If you have something, for instance, I'll, I'll, Taco's going to make this roll because he's like led the charge. But if you can think of some other little juicy nug, uh, to like aid in this, then yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you do it. Okay. That. We can always overwhelm them with numbers. <clears throat> yeah. You know, so like if, if the story starts to flag, one of us can jump in. Uh, this would be, uh, let's do persuasion juice. Okay, wait. Uh, Magnus says, uh, yeah, uh, Sheriff Isaac mentioned you were having some problems with some renegades, some uh, bandanaed fellows, and was wondering if we might be able to help out. Okay, I thought I had that situation under control, but um, 
Uh, okay, Taco, okay. go ahead and make that roll and uh, take advantage on it. Okay, that is a 14 or 20. Whoa! Nat 20. Hello. Nat 20. Okay, yeah, you... Uh, I love you. It, it, it's, <laughs> uh, please, have my babies. Um, it's unconventional that Sheriff Isaac would reach out like that. To, I mean, it's so rare that we have visitors for under any circumstances, but especially for, you know, security purposes, but... Let, let if, me ask you this. Is there anything conventional about this situation? That's a great point. Okay, um, I guess come with me. I haven't actually seen Sheriff Isaac today, but... Uh, I'm I'm sure he'll turn up. You can just wait at the office um, for for now. Excellent. Thank you so much. Lead the way. So here is how this arc is going to work. And I want to lay it out straight with you fellas, because I what the last thing that I want to do is have you guys just do the same shit over and over and over again. This, what you have just done now that you have bluffed your way past Roswell, now that you've like figured out a way to, to do that and executed it, you can just do that now in any future loop. Okay. Um, and that I'm, makes sense. I'm not going to make you guys do the same roles over and over and right. over again. Um, in, the, in the same sense, if you can sort of build uh, an hour of good loops, like I will let you also kind of fast forward to whatever point you need to, assuming that you have like a way to get there based on the things that you've accomplished in the past, which is going to be like, it's going to be a bit abstract to keep track of, but I think it's the only way to do this. Cause yeah, I, otherwise we, we're going to hear the same thing over and over, over again. and over and over again. And that's just going to be really, really bad radio. Yeah. Um, yeah. I am going to try. Dad, and- you know something about bad radio, right? Do you have any <laughs> yes, advice for Griffin? Let I'm me a- tell you about bad radio, everybody. Hi. Oh boy. <laughs> Hi, it's time for some bad radio. Um, <laughs> As the as the as the DM of this arc, I'm going to do my best to keep everything to keep everything sort of straight and make sure that everybody's doing the same shit every time. If I slip up, it's not me like dropping hints or whatever. It's an honest to god screw up um, because this this hour is the is this arc. Um, Got it. I, I I also kind of this is also a bit unconventional, but uh, in order to give you a bit of direction, I don't want you guys just kind of flailing in the wind. Uh, I wanted to lay out some objectives for the arc, um, just so they're a bit clear. Um, you need... I think I know one of them. I think well, well, I'm... one of them is to recover the, the temporal chalice and get right. it out, get it out of town, uh, and take it back. We to also him. are we going to make Andy McDowell fall in love with us? That is a sub quest, and I'll, I'll give oh, you. Are we going to ruin Chris Elliott's life? <laughs> ruin Chris Elliott's life, you'll get extra experience points for that. Um, no, I, you also... I already did. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask him about it. It's all he'll fucking talk about anymore. Um, you also need to figure out, uh, in addition to, to getting the Grand Relic, you need to figure out what caused this bubble to pop up around town um, and sort of uh, discover the the mystery of the bubble. Um, the other thing you need to do is figure out what is destroying the town and try to stop it. And Those objectives are not of time in game to do What's that? that or is in game does an hour pass or is it that we have an hour of recording? Oh do? god, no, we can't do an hour of recording time. I, I saw some people asking about that in the in the Reddit. We can't do it like that or else this thing would go on forever. I, I want you guys like going through mad loops. Um those those two objectives I laid out of figuring out what the bubble is and figuring out what's stopping the uh, figuring out what's destroying the town, not as important as the third one, but they will I will tell you they will help get you there. Got it. Um, that being said, uh, you are walking into town with Roswell, and you know the layout now. Um, you guys can consult the map at any point. I'll just assume you all three have photographic memories. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, Ro- Roswell, uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Sheriff Isaac mentioned in his communication to us that he was worried about uh, some of the more uh, vulnerable uh, targets in town specifically the bank what kind of um security are we looking at uh around the bank is there any way we could go uh see the layout and make sure that everything's secure that's um that's really suspicious you know that right hey let me see the blueprints to the bank that's what you just asked basically no 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 just instead of heading straight to the office you said yourself that you didn't think sheriff isaac was there would you mind if we just kind of like walked around town and looked for him i pull out a gun and i shoot the two of them and shoot myself (laughs) (laughs) Starting again. Um, <laughs> he says, uh, "No, I don't. I, I, I believe you that Sheriff Isaac reached out to you, but I don't know you guys. Um, you haven't told me your names yet, which is a bit rude. 
Um, Magnus I, Burnsides. I, you I, call me the hammer. Uh, pleasure. Um, I think it would be best if you just kind of waited at, at the office for now, okay? Okay. Uh, he walks to the office. It's about a, it's about 11.05 right now. You can see as you walk into town, you can uh, see the uh, clock tower from above and turns you towards the sheriff's office, which when you walk in, it's just as you remember it. It's There's the destroyed chairs. It's Roswell's desk. There's Cassidy in the jail cell at the end. A uh, map hanging on the wall um, just as you left it. Well, I'll, is Roswell about to leave? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. Roswell walks in and sits down on their chair uh, which kind of creaks and moans under their weight. I'm trying to stick with the they pronoun to for Roswell. I keep fucking that up. I want to see what... Dad plays a lot of, like, open-world RPGs. I'm curious what Dad thinks we should do first. We obviously are stuck in this location for a while, right? Well, I mean, I got magic and shit. If you want to leave, just say the word. I think we, <laughs> I think we, I think we need to get some more information out of Roswell. Of- and, and then I think we need to get some more information out of... Uh, Jailbird Betty. Cassidy? Yeah, Cassidy. Uh, and I, I, also, keep and in mind. You're that, asking me. I may. I, you don't. I mean, I'm thinking about casting Zone of Truth, but I don't know. <sighs> it's been a while. I would think, and I'm not sure. I don't know if Zone of Truth, and you may have to refer to your cards. I don't know if Zone of Truth would work on Roswell. Does Zone uh, of Truth compel truth, or does it just yeah. stop people from lying? Uh, I don't know. I, I think those two are similar enough that it wouldn't really matter mechanically okay. roswell's gonna uh, actually ask you first uh they say um uh so why did sheriff isaac reach out to you are you guys like fixers or something why are you what do you what do you uh, let me lay it out there's only like five of those guys uh, of the bandits and they're they're dicks but they're not especially dangerous can so i ask I, you a question five that you know of roswell i mean there's only like a little over a hundred people living in a refuge. I'm pretty sure if, if given enough time, I could kind of list them all out by name. And how long have you been looking for these five, and how many of them have you arrested? Um, that's a good point. That's a good point. Asked and, asked and answered. Look, let me tell you a little something. No. That, I can't, I can't you don't want be, that to be the new voice? Be. Okay. Okay, let me ask you this. Isn't it possible that maybe you don't have the sheriff's confidence totally? I mean, he brought us in. Shit, we're just going to dismantle this. And you haven't arrested out. anybody. You know, Roswell, maybe you just ain't getting the job done. Yeah, I guess I, you know, I'm not the fastest um, in the world. So, uh, I mean, it's hard to catch him sometimes. Right. Cer- certainly you can relate to think that. About, think about this. You're, you're what, one year old, Max. There's no way that you'd be uh, have the cunning to uh, okay. arrest these kinds of I kind of, of feel like I'm getting dunked on a little bit no, here. So. Uh, think of us you as consultants. Sure, sure, We're here to help yeah. you. We um, want to make you look good. It's your lead. It's your show, baby. Uh, you hear uh, from down the street, whoom, whoom, and uh, the sound of some, some furniture getting tossed around. Uh, it sounds it sounds like a scuffle is happening down the street. And Russell says, oh, let's see if I'm competent enough to handle this. Yeah, let's go check it out. Uh, yeah, I guess we can. I guess y'all can come along. Uh, get some, we'll just, go with. Just stay behind me. Let me lead the charge because you guys don't really technically have any authority here yet. Sure. Yeah, uh, you yeah, got it. Let the, let the slowest guy lead the charge. Go for it. You, uh, you go outside with Roswell. Uh, you can see up on the clock it's 1110. And uh, just like the last loop, uh, you see some dudes in purple kerchiefs uh, that have been blasted out into the street, uh, out of the front door of the Davy Lamp, the local saloon. Uh, and when they see you all coming, they turn tail and just hoof it, start hoofing it uh, down the street, back towards the uh, entry gate, and then they turn a sharp right uh, into some buildings. Do, do I have a chance to bow and arrow somebody? Uh, yeah, sure, if you want. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on a bow and arrow and aim for a calf. Uh, it's Grizzly. Debilitating. That's his name? And that's a 17 plus 8, so 25. Okay, yeah, you hit one of them uh, in the calf, uh, mm-hmm. and they don't like taking that damage. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, you get them just as they're like turning the corner around the building, and you hear them yell like, oh, dang it. That was uh that was one d six. That's a six plus two, so it's eight damage. In case it okay, matters. so so it's more like ah, oh, dang it, eight damage is pretty good. Yeah, they don't fall, you know, to the ground crying, yelling, "Okay, arrest me now!" And they they've sort of run out of sight. Roswell is going to keep on chasing them down the street, though. Stay on the stay on the hunt. I'm feeling kind of thirsty. 
Nope. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's uh, head Gosh, into the, We let's haven't worried about food shooting. or drink so far in the game, but I guess <laughs> yeah, now we will. Let's head into the. Uh, I I wouldn't be opposed to a uh, 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 a refreshment. Okay. Um, I was trying to think of like a fancy. Yeah, but it sounded like, like you were skipping. Yeah. A pilsner. Uh, a pilsner. That's great. Let's go into the Davy Lamp. Oh, maybe they have the the honey apple mead. What was it for that Noel made? Red cheek. Bo- uh, that that good good red cheek sauce. I forget what it was. I'm I think gonna it have actually, a Harvey Wall banger. It would actually be called. Uh, their brand was Apple Sauce. It was like a fun play on words. But it was like really strong booze. Okay, just made okay. of apples. Okay, yeah. You uh, you walk in through those old timey saloon doors into the Davy Lamp, um, and despite the fact that it seems like a like kind of a, a kerfuffle just happened in here, it, it doesn't seem like anybody was really paying it any mind uh, because this kerfuffle happened like thirty seconds ago, and there are no signs of fight happened. Uh, so, so it kind of seems like those those two ruffians kind of just got their asses handed I, to them very efficiently. I want to step in here just so anyone listening is like, why did Magnus shoot that person with the arrow and then do nothing about it? I've got a thing called Lens of Straight Creeping that lets me follow people, yeah, follow sure. tracks. So, like, I would be following the scuffling one in case I need to. No, that works. Okay. That track. And, just, that is, and it's so Magnus just shooting somebody. Yeah. Right. It's, on. it's also, I, you maybe you just wanted to hurt someone. Yeah, yeah. I haven't gotten to hurt anyone so far in the episode and one tenth we've recorded. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> y- y- but you make your way into the Davy Lamp. Um, there's maybe about a dozen people in here. Are you saying Baby Lamp? You got a map right there. I, okay, but Davy Lamp. Okay. That was like an old timey lamp that was less flammable that miners would use. <gasps> ah. You just blew that away. Now the son has become the dad. I blew that away with the. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on look your at, dad promotion. Look at me. Griffin. Look at me. I'm the dad now. <laughs> uh, Take it. Uh, uh, you, you walk in. <laughs> this shit sucks, pal. Um, just wait. Let me just describe. Wait. Let me describe the scene a little bit. There's a, there's a piano. There's a guy playing the piano. Uh, there's about a dozen people here. Um, most of whom are just kind of sitting around tables drinking. Uh, there is uh, an elf wearing a really slick looking uh, uh, poncho. Uh, who is playing poker? Uh, they're not playing poker. They're playing like Aww. some some card game that you've never really seen before. One on one. It is a one on one game uh, that they're playing against uh, uh, some other non essential NPC. Uh, and then there's the <laughs> bartender uh, who is uh, polishing. Oh shit! This is gonna be. She is a uh, she's a dark elf uh, woman. Uh, who is uh, holding a, uh, a a magic rod, which is like halfway between a wand and a staff, uh, that seems like like imagine like gun smoke is coming off of it. Um, you you can tell uh, Taco that that this rod was just used to to kick the asses of those two guys. This rod was just used to kick the asses of those two guys. How did Thank you know you. that? Yeah. Right. Oh, Arcana, my friend. Hey, uh, can there be a shuffleboard game? Please, 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 please. One of those shuffleboard games with the sawdust, please. There's one of those please. shuffleboard games with the yeah! sawdust, but it's one of them that like one of the legs is a little short, and so the game is just absolutely not fun to play. Oh. Um. Fire and ice, baby. That's me. That's how I do it. Come at you hot and cold. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it, it is a lively scene that as soon as you walk in becomes a not lively scene. And despite the fact that a, a, a parent, an apparent bar fight did not interrupt the flow, the party flow in this spot, uh, but the three of you walking in definitely does. Wait, uh, are you telling me that they're not being rustically hospitable to me? Uh, in, this, <laughs> in this exact moment, no. They're not being mean to you. They just look at you with shock. Um, bearing in mind that this is a town that like a hundred people live in and hey here's three new people hail and well met yeah no i go to the bartender saunter I, saunter i saw the, that's good dad yeah, i saunter, saunter over to the bar um listen i just wanted to say that was a heck of a shot i love magic too oh <laughs> my god it's you're actually taco you're taco <laughs> yeah i'm taco you're the you're the taco Oh, well, it's always nice to meet a fan. The magical the magical <laughs> chef. I, I saw your show in the Underdark. In you, the ma- the, yeah, when you when chef, you, that was me. When you played the Underdark. you Oh, my God. You, you like, you're my inspiration. That you, was the quiche, quiche Lorraine, wasn't it? That the was the quiche Lorraine. Lorraine. I'll never forget. That's That was the first thing I ever cooked. You, like, 
inspired me to start cooking. You helped me get out of the underdark. That's I, what are you doing here? Well, <laughs> I, I'm bringing the show to you. Uh, <laughs> I'm on tour, I guess, and uh, with me and my friends here, we're uh, we're. I'm sort of doing, I guess you could call it some uh, undercover work. You know, we're, we're fixers. The uh, the sheriff brought us in to sort of investigate how things are going here at the town. It sounds like there's a little bit of trouble. We're just trying to figure out the lay of the land. Uh, Madam, uh, we did not catch your name. Who, what was your name? I'm Ren. Who are you? look familiar, too. Uh, have, have we met? Nah. All right. R-E-N or W-R-E-N? Uh, just R-E-N. Or how about okay. R-E-N, and then it, there could be a footloose connection. No. Okay. Nope. No. 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 Nope. Okay. 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 Uh, Ren, have you ever had any um, carpentry work done? What I, a ridiculous... I, that's kind of a ridiculous question. I know, no. but I can't think of where else we would have met. I what don't know. What is it about the three of us fucking playing Dungeons & Dragons? We're just the basic keystones of human conversation just like instantly go right out us. the window no, yeah. i'm playing magnus he's not do charismatic need, need anything fixed <laughs> like that's not char- there's nothing <laughs> less charismatic than that um i tell you what i have an idea what's your name what is your name though Ma- magnus burnsides let's go play some shuffleboard and let taco talk to the lady uh, uh ren can i just talk to taco real quick just one second yeah, sure. I, hey, Magnus, I feel like being hospitable to you for some reason. Hey, thanks. I get that a lot. It's the it's the sideburns. Um, hey, Taco. Yeah. How long ago was your show in the Underdark? Um, oh, let's see. It was it was about uh, your show in the what? Underdark was about uh, six years ago. Six years ago. The in memory serves. the horrific event that caused you to stop doing the show, the big poisoning. That was like five years ago. Got it. Okay. Um, mm. Taco, ask her how long ago she saw that show in the Underdark. Okay, I'll uh, I'll give it a shot. Um, do you want to just? Uh, I'll just talk to her and get the lay of the land. I, I I'm gotcha. gonna yeah. I'm gonna head to the piano. Okay. Who wants to arm wrestle my buddy? He can whip every ass in here. Oh, that's good. That's rustically yeah, hospitable. I that'd be good. I'll pay big money anybody who can out arm wrestle my pal Magnus. Let's you know, do let's do two all. let's do two quick scenes because I do want to follow up on that. Um, okay, Taco. Let's Taco. Okay. Let's do this conversation between you and Ren first. Great. When did you uh, remind me? How long ago was that? that do you show remember me? There weren't that. I mean, it was the Underdarks. There weren't that many people sure. interested in watching a cooking show. Right, but how long? I mean, was that? It was a. It's, it was about. I don't know. Not that about a couple of years ago. It was shortly before I came a here. Years ago. Right. Yeah. It, that sounds right. Um. Can I get you um, anything to drink or anything? Or um. I oh I here I know what I can do. She reaches down under the table and uh, uh, gets a key for you and hands it to you and says, "Please, I you guys are new in town. It seems like and you could probably use a place to stay. Um. So so why don't you use the room upstairs for a while? Check in is at noon." Um, so just wait around till then and, um, uh, just go ahead and drop off your stuff. It's, it's, it's our best room. And, uh, God, I wish that we had something nicer. I'm sorry. I'm kind of geeking out right now. Check-ins at noon? Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you go ahead and hold on to the key for me for a little bit? I'll, uh, I'll come back and, I'll come back and get it. See you at noon 01. Yeah. I'll be here at 1201 prom. Is there early check-in? Um, so... Can I ask a weird question? And this is going to sound like a complete outsider, but I, I think you get me enough to know that I'm I'm sort of on the level with this. Yeah. Um, what is with the bubble? Right. Yeah. It's um. It's, it popped up a little over a year ago, and um, I don't know. I I'm sort of ambivalent about it. Like, I obviously sure. it keeps sure. us safe from the the dangers of outside and all that, but I I feel a little cooped up from time to time. Um, right, yeah. But I, I don't know. Things were not actually How go- long has it been since you've been outside the bubble? Nobody goes outside the bubble. Right, okay, good. Um, has anybody ever left? Not that I know of. Um, yeah, no, I don't think so. Hmm. Um, it, yeah, it popped up a little over a year ago. Th- I mean, things were, weren't so great in Refuge before it went up. Um, we were, a, it was a, you know, it was a little quiet mining town for a while. Well, it was a loud mining town for a while. We, we, we sure, did, with the mining. We did diamonds. Um, we had a big mother load underneath Refuge that um, dried up pretty quickly. And when it dried up, the town kind of dried up. 
Um, and things weren't going so great. And honestly, things have gotten a bit better when the when the bubble went up. We're all like pretty nice to each other. It's 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 a pretty safe, chill place to live. So it went up a year ago, but before that, everybody just sort of came and went as they as they pleased, huh? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it was a town. Sure, a town. I mean, don't get uppity. You live in a bubble. <laughs> that is fair. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's any such thing as a stupid question. You live in a bubble. No, it's it's an it's an unconventional way to live, definitely. So, uh, what's what what do you think about Sheriff Isaac? What's the story there? He seems like a good dude to me. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, a lot of people preferred the the last elder, um, Jack, but you know him him and June, um, they but they they died, and by by their sacrifice, our town is made safe, um, and all that. But I like I like Sheriff Isaac. All right, he's a, he's not a uh, you know I'm a bartender. I run a, a bar, and it's important sure. for me to keep like kind of a fun kind of a fun flirty atmosphere going in here um mm-hmm. and like kind of a sourpuss like him doesn't exactly lend itself to that but uh yeah i you know he does he, he's doing his best yeah you don't want everybody to head into that other bar that's a okay no that's fair <laughs> i think i'm just saying you're trying too hard i, I think you could take it easy and uh, you'll be fine <laughs> uh, uh J- jack and jane they're the ones in the uh jack, statue, jack, huh? and, jack and jack and june jack and june? june yeah jack and june are the ones on the statue yeah yeah. Um, that's them. I want to do the arm wrestling scene. Uh, that elf in the poncho, uh, motions you Merle and Magnus over. And, okay. uh, the, the big, big, big guy that, uh, this elf in the poncho is playing, uh, uh, cards with the, the elf motions and says, uh, I, I would love to watch you arm wrestle this guy here. Uh, and the, the guy he motions to is, uh, it's a Goliath. Which is a, a race in D and D five e that is uh, as the name might denote uh, a big race. I uh, I enjoy wagers. So uh, how much are you willing to bet on your horse there, dwarf dwarf guy? <clears throat> Man, I don't know. I mean, you you sure you want to take that on? The guy your guy looks pretty much like a, a wimp compared to my boy Magnus. Isn't that right, big fella? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's just factually inaccurate. You can he's look flexible. at it. I mean, he's. He's pretty big there, Merle. Um, no. <laughs> it is not nearly as good as that uh, when you whip that uh, Clark guy arm wrestling. Remember that, buddy? Yeah. Show him show him the pecs. Show him. Do you show him no. the pecs? Uh, do you yeah. show him the do you no. show him the pecs, Summer Boy? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I do. Fuck it. Okay. Magnus rushes in, I show him the pecs, I sit down at the table. Okay. Yeah. The I've go- got I'll, I'll make you a deal. The Goliath also flexes and he has four pecs. I'll make you a deal. How about we play for information? That's the weirdest thing I've ever heard, and I have to be honest, it's not especially interesting to me. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought that you were a gambler, but you're a coward. That's fine. Okay. <gasps> well, that's that also works as well. Uh, but if we gamble gold and you gamble information. I'm not really interested in gold. We have a, a strictly diamond-based economy here. Well, I meant diamonds, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, I would do... Uh, Let's do, why not do both? I'll put up ten diamonds on my boy here. Uh, what do you, what do you say? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll match you even odds. I'll, I'll put ten diamonds up. I mean, I lean in tomorrow. We don't have diamonds. I know, and you're also not going to be able to beat him. Yeah, and everything ends in forty five minutes anyway. So fuck it. I know. So why are we talking out of the sides of our mouths like this? All right. Yeah, sounds good. Ten diamonds and information. Okay, the the uh, the elf and the uh, this Goliath accepts your bet, and I uh, put up the hand with Phantom Fist on it. Okay, I don't know. Come on, that's come on. That could be some kind of power glove. That could be a Nintendo power glove. Hey, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, and the elf says, "Would you remove the glove, please?" I. It smells really bad under there. <laughs> Classic. My glove smells bad. Play. <laughs> Sunshine. Sunshine's the best disinfectant. Let's come on. <clears throat> All right. I remove the glove. Okay. Uh, are you? Are, so we're arm wrestling then. Yeah, I guess. Do I have any so. awareness of this? This is happening simultaneously. With my yeah, this is happening behind your back. Good. I'm good out here. Oh God. Is there any way I can cast something without everybody knowing it? Uh, you can cast something, whether or not uh, nobody knows it is. Could, it actually would flux. be. I think it would be dependent on the um, 
the type of yeah some of, some of it is verbal some of it is if it, material if based has a v on it then it's verbal which i guess you, you could do a I you could know. fucking I, cough I have an idea under your breath right. be like oh, super strength now uh fellows as you may know i am a man of the cloth i don't know anything um, i don't know fuck I'm, all about you I know. That's why I'm here. I'm here to spread the word of Pan. So before we uh, indulge in this uh, athletic competition, may I say a quick blessing, please? No, no. I that's put my not hand how, on. That's I not, put my hand on Magnus's shoulder. Okay. Just charging straight ahead and start mumbling some mumbo jumbo. But as I do that, I cast Bull's strength on him from enhanceability. Okay. Um, Amen. I think it's only fair that I am allowed to pray to my God as well. The elf says, and uh, they put their hand on uh, this big Goliath. Okay, Tits. are we ready to wrestle or what? Yeah, you know Amen. what? Fuck Amen. It. Amen. Bull strength. It, it, um, you gain this effect until the spell ends. Great. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. It is a spell, and when you have it, you got it. <laughs> when you, you get the spell, it, you know. when you get the spell, you know it does the you thing in your heart. The bull the was in is. you all along. <laughs> you have advantage on strength checks. Okay. 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 So he has advantage on strength. Am I going to roll first, or is Goliath going to go first? Uh, we, I, I already rolled. You go ahead. Okay. okay. Well, I thank God for advantage, because that was an 11. That was a 19. Uh, 8, so 27. Uh, this Goliath rolled a 29. Tits! Slams wow. your arm down hard. Now, hold on. 29 on to 27. You think that slams it down, Griffin? Uh, I think a 29 <laughs> can do whatever the hell it pleases. I think it could So be there was no way I was going to beat this Goliath. Um, not the way that this situation went down, no. Uh, slams your down. Uh, we'll hand get down. him again next time. Goes, <laughs> 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 it was pretty, it was not bad, but I've had better. Uh, and the elf says, uh, uh, diamonds, please. Double they, or nothing? Uh, they hold out their hand. <clears throat> yeah, let's double or nothing before Nah, let's just uh, cash out. We... What do you say? Diamonds, please. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, do you guys want to run away? Is that why you want to cash out? It, uh, do you not have 20 diamonds? If so, then that's fine. Do you not have 10 diamonds? Yeah, <laughs> we got 10 diamonds, pal. Yeah, we're willing to keep playing. You guys are the ones who want to walk away, so... We're sportsmen! The, we're sportsmen! The Goliath, we with a single hand, like, picks up the table in between you and, like, lifts it in the air and sort of sets it down at his side so there's nothing between you and says, uh, I think I'd like those 10 diamonds now. My hand goes to my sword. You don't have... Uh, your rapier? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, if we're doing this thing, let's fucking do this thing. No, no, I didn't draw it. My hand just goes to it. No, that was the Goliath. If we're going to do this thing, let's fucking do this thing, he says, and stands up. So you'd rather fight than arm wrestle. The uh, I'm going to hop back into that other scene, because I think at this point, uh, Ren sees what's going on and says, Hey, hey, cut that shit out. Give them their diamonds and get out of here. If you're going to cause trouble... Taco, are these guys with you? No. Give them their diamonds. <laughs> Uh, give, okay, give sounds those. great. Magnus runs out of the building. Okay. Well, okay, mm. Dwarf Man, you better have those diamonds, or else we're going to have problems. I mean, Magnus yells back, I've got to go to the bank and get them. <laughs> <laughs> They're in my other pants. Hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master, your best friend, your personal chef. Have some asparagus. I cooked the asparagus for you to eat. Thanks for listening to episode 43 of The Adventure Zone and the third episode of The 11th Hour Arc. Um, I really hope that we can sort of fulfill the promise that we made in the last episode, uh, trying to do some Groundhog's Day shit. It's been very difficult to plan and uh, even more difficult to execute, but... Uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can turn a dumb, fun story out of it. I have a few messages here to read out on the show. If you want to get a message on the Adventure Zone, just go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron. You can find out how to do it there. This message is from John Helgerson and Emily Bennett, and it's to Daniel and Jordan Kiniston. 
Uh, John and Emily say to Daniel and Jordan, Yo, guys, we are so happy that you were involved in our wedding from helping John propose in Japan to officiating in Reno. We hope we can get together soon to play more games and beat Hans at more trivia. You guys are the best, and we love you. That is a cool little intercontinental love thing you got going on there. Congratulations on your recent wedding, and congratulations on having two good friends like John and Emily to help you out and and put your name up on the big marquee atop the Adventure Zone Theater. I have a call to action here. I want you to go to who is monkier. Now that's M O N K I E R. I thought it was moniker for a long time, but that's just how my brain is wired. Anyway, go to who is monkier.com to listen to the band Monkier's new album Highs Lows. Monkier you see, is an eight-piece hip-hop band from Atlanta with a four-piece horn section, a guitarist slash rapper, and dope beats. They use jazz fusion and electronic influences, I don't know why I said that word that way, to make something fresh. Here's a little clip from one of their songs. I agree. That's pretty fucking fresh. Again, whoismonkeyear.com. Check out the album Highs Slash Lows. There's a slash in there. I don't know if you're supposed to verbalize it, but I tried both ways to just kind of hedge my bets. One last message here. This one is for The Horrible Shrike, and it's from Harris Bear, who says, Since you somehow convinced Emily to marry you at a Mabim Bam live show, it seems fitting to offer congratulations on your impending nuptials via another McElroy product. You're a spike monster, the king of the hill people, hater of the year every year, and after 10 years of friendship, I'm proud to be your best man. P.S. Save it for the podcast. I don't know which proposal that was. I don't know if it was the Milwaukee uh, uh, proposal fest uh, or, or one of the other live show proposals that our listeners have been kind enough to let us share with them over the years, but uh, in, in any regards, uh, congratulations on your upcoming wedding, and I hope it all goes real well. This week, the Adventure Zone is sponsored in part by Blue Apron. I literally just ate a Blue Apron dinner. It was like a pork, a ground pork burger with black bean mayo sauce, and there was like a Japanese green bean blanched salad on the side. Holy shit, it was good. Uh, Blue Apron, we talk about a lot of my bim bim. I don't know if if I've talked about it here, but it's changed my life. I did not know how to cook literally at all, and we started doing Blue Apron. And now I'm getting better at cooking, and it's really exciting. I have a new skill, and I love doing it. I, I cook a couple times a week, um, and it's really nice meals, really fresh farm-to-table ingredients, and it's it's less than 10 bucks a meal. Deliver seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. There's, there's new recipes each week. They don't repeat recipes within a year. Um, you can customize the menu based on your preferences. It's amazing. Uh, you can check out this week's menu. Get your first three meals free with free shipping. Just go to blueapron.com slash adventure. Uh, again, that's blueapron.com slash adventure. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Seriously, Blue Apron's legit. I don't get that shit for free. I pay for that shit, and I eat it all the time because it's good. Anyway, I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the, the Zonecast hashtag. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing how many people came out after last week's episode. Uh, I didn't know how people were going to receive it and the reception was astonishing. Thank you all so much. If you tweet about the show using the, the Zonecast hashtag, you might end up as a character in the show. You might end up like Ren. That's Ren Fraley on Twitter. You might end up as Paloma, who you're about to meet. That's Paloma Church of Fear on Twitter. Uh, you might end up as Brogdon. That's Megan Brogdon, who you're also about to meet, uh, or you've already met. Because time travel shit is going to get pretty whack pretty fast. Anyway, uh, just tweet about the show. You could end up like like one of those characters uh, as a character. If you get a chance and you're looking for more podcasts to go listen to, uh, go check out MaximumFun.org. There's a ton of shows on this network that we belong to. They're all amazing. The network's been really great to us, and there's so much good stuff on there. Stuff like Jordan Jesse Go and Getting Curious and Stop Podcasting Yourself and Throwing Shade and Can I Pet Your Dog? Like so many good shows, all at MaximumFun.org. If you want to hear other podcasts that we do, just go to McElroyShows.com, uh, and you can find out all the podcasts we do, all the video stuff we do, uh, and uh, how to get in touch with us. Oh, speaking of, uh, I'm going to mention here on this podcast, because I've done it on the other podcasts uh i just opened a p.o box here in austin um i i know some people send justin and travis from stuff from time to time and have asked me uh how to get stuff to me postcards wedding invites whatever uh i got a p.o box now it is p.o box 66639 
Austin, Texas, 78766. Um, again, P.O. Box 66639, Austin, Texas, 78766. Hit me up. Let's chat. Well, it's not a chat. It's a one-way mail discourse. But anyway, uh, I'm going to let you get back to the episode now. Thank you all so much uh, for, for listening. The next episode is going to be up on July 14th. And then we are going to be doing our live show in Boston the day after that, July 15th. Um, the plan for that, I think, is to hold on to it until, uh, I don't know if you talked about this on this podcast, Travis and I uh, are both, with our respective wives, uh, expecting. We're both having babies. Um, and so come this holiday season, we're going to need to fill up the old podcast feed with some extra stuff while we are on paternity leave. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be live in Boston on the 15th. Super excited. Uh, I can't wait to see some of the faces of people who've been tweeting about the show for so long. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. Anyway, here comes the rest of the episode. Bye. Suddenly, an earthquake. I am running towards the bank. That is what I was doing. Okay. It is 1130, um, which is earthquake o'clock. Uh, there is a short but powerful tremor that, that rattles the whole town. Um, Merle and Taco, are, what are you guys, what are you doing? Are you just hanging out in the bar? I'm like chilling. I, I asking Ren, like, does that happen a lot? No, that was weird. Uh, she, she's uh, scooping up some uh, broken glass that's on the floor. Um, some, some bottles have fallen down. Um, some glasses have, have been knocked over, uh, and there's some broken glass on the floor. Um, she says, uh, no, I don't, uh, I'm sorry, I need to, I need to take care of this, so, um, is there anything else I can, uh, help you figure out what's, what's, what's the... Real quick, the bubble we talked about, do you have any idea what's making it? Like, did somebody cast a spell at some point, or is it, does it seem to emanate from anywhere? Is there any place you're not allowed to go? What, what, any ideas? I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know I, it, what caused it was Jack and June. Their sacrifice, you know, making what? Uh, what was the sacrifice? Well, uh, it, I don't like to talk about. It. It's pretty sad. I liked them both a lot. Um, but June, mm-hmm. June liked to play in the mines, and she got lost. And um, J- Jack went to find her, and then they fell and and died. And right when that happened, that's that's when the bubble popped up. So so they were. I mean, they were in the quarry. I guess. I, I mean, I guess if we're trying to figure out like where it originates, like that's that would be it, I guess. I you Weren't know what? There are three figures in the statue. Yeah, well, there was the there was the visitor that brought them um, that brought them to to refuge. So um, wait, the visitor brought them to refuge, and then Jack was made the elder. Yeah, he was really great. He was a really great guy. Hmm. The elder before ran the mines, and so when that dried up, they you know there wasn't a lot for for them to do um you know you you should talk to um by the way this is only this conversation is only happening with taco because merle you are unless you run away or do something you are still in the uh on the hook for those diamonds um you should talk to paloma she who's paloma um she uh she's great she lives out in the woods uh, a lot of people uh don't love that she's just kind of out there doing her own thing um, but she's really good at helping people kind of figure out, uh, you know, get their bearings, so to speak. She's a that's, witch. She's a, she's a witch. witch. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's the witch's thing. Yeah. Um, she's a witch. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hey, can I have that, uh, the, that key? We'll come back a little later and get our stuff all checked in. Uh, yeah, sure. Here you go. She hands you the key. Merle, what are you doing? Diamonds, <clears throat> diamonds, diamonds. I have to agree with my accomplice here. Diamonds. You know, fellas, wealth is not important. It's more important to have spiritual diamonds. You know what I'm saying? Laying up those diamonds. Uh, the in Goliath heaven. has grabbed you by the ankles and is now shaking you uh, uh, violently uh, to try and make diamonds come out of you. I poop a diamond. <laughs> Wait, what? Like no, that is a dwarf racial feature. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dwarf racist feature that people's racist grandpa okay, say. Okay, about put dwarfs. me down. Put me down. Uh, 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 let me handle this. Uh, go ahead. Put me down. Put me down. Okay. He puts you down. Okay. I hold up my tree hand. Okay. Do you see this? Yeah. 
Now, you see me raise it in the air? Yep. You see me moving it back and forth? Are you trying to hypnotize me or something? No, no. Do you see it waving back yes, and forth? Yes, 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 yes. See ya, and I turn and run. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. Man, these guys, huh? You know what? I'll catch him. <laughs> I'll run after him. Um, all right. It's a little bit after 1130. Um, you see Roswell, uh, uh, who doesn't see you, uh, walking his way into Helpingtons, where you saw oh, him. By the way, I, I just point of order. I catch them up on the stuff that, um, okay, fine. that she told me. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, Roswell, uh, walking over to Helpingtons to, uh, do some cleanup. Help it clean up, like you saw in the last loop. Um, what are you doing? Oh, you also see, I should point out, um, uh, coming down the street, uh, coming out from around the jail from the sheriff's office, you see Cassidy, uh, who kind of like pokes her head down Main Street and looks around and then turns and walks back out of sight. What do you want to do? Wow. Um, well, so Why don't we go onto the bank? Yeah, so here's what I know. Magnus knows that there was a hit on the bank in the last loop. Right. And people died. Sure. So I feel like Magnus wants to hang around the bank to prevent that from happening again. That is totally fair, and that's your prerogative. Point of order, uh, about 15 minutes after that, everybody dies. Yeah, but like... We're the trying perfect, to figure I mean, out a, the the perfect loops, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. But I feel like the perfect loop involves us not everybody <laughs> dying. You know what? You know what? If Tacos caught us up on that, I say we head for the witch. I say that this is not our last time doing this loop, and what we need now is information. I agree, but Cassidy's right there. She's right there. Yeah, but do you remember the last time we tried to talk to her, and she was all garbled and didn't give us a straight answer to anything? Yes. I feel like the witch is our best bet. <laughs> Um, She's right there. I would let you guys uh, split up if you wanted. If you wanted it to split up, and we could do like two quick scenes. That might. I yeah. mean, it, we you got an hour, so that might it might be the best way to get I'm stuff done. That. I'll How go check out I the go, witch. You go get. I'll Cassidy. go check out Cassidy. Where are you going? I would probably be the most help with the witch because magic. Go pals. for it. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. So we'll do uh, witch first, and then we'll do Cassidy. Okay. Um, so, uh, Taco and Magnus, you two are going to, to the witch, going to yes. visit Paloma. Okay, you, uh, you make your way into the woods behind the Elder's Manor. Just to double check real quick, I'm going to pull out the lens of straight cubing and make sure that we're not about to be ambushed or anything, that this isn't the way that the people went. Um, so, hmm, which way would the people have went? No, I don't, I don't think you necessarily see, uh, the, the footprints here. Great. Or the blood trail that you also would have I'm, uh, I'm gonna as we approach i'm gonna cast uh detect magic okay there's a lot of it okay but what the what this does is i'm basically trying to watch out for uh traps so this puts oh, an okay. aura around anything magical so in case this witch like doesn't want visitors i want to know sure 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 are we dealing with a baba yaga situation griffin if so you have to tell us <laughs> no <laughs> Otherwise, i, I legally try right, right sure uh no you don't you don't uh you detect a lot you so you see the hut i should say actually before you see the hut you smell the hut um and it smells amazing you know how you know the the heiners factory in the west oh, end sure, of huntington right. west virginia west end, yeah. once you once you're within like a mile of heiners makes amazing bread and once you're within like a mile of that place, you could literally it, it it produces visible stink lines that you could follow through the air like a cartoon cat. You fucking float. and you fly, you, you float. Yeah, you float on like <laughs> that's literally what oh. we're talking about here. You smell like sweet bread and pie and sweets. Um, Another stop to make next to candle nights, folks. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna eat that house. Uh, oh, no, it is not a just, gonna, gingerbread. No, it's not a gingerbread house. Holy shit! No, it's not. That would be too much even for me. Um, you using detect magic, uh, taco. You detect. Um, I mean, some fucking magically delicious uh, baked goods, but also like divination magic, like out the ass. Um, um, just for simplicity's sake, Griffin, let's yo. assume that we have our stones of far speech yeah, open. Sure. So when Dad makes comments on stuff, it's not weird. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> You uh, so you make your way uh, up to the hut. There doesn't, there's no traps you can see. Um, it is a small, very small cottage. Um, I knock on the door. Okay. Whoa. Okay. You hear uh, come in. 
Okay. I do. Okay, you open the door, and um, you enter into a very strange room. There, uh, hanging from the ceiling, are a bunch of crystals of some sort, and they're all in the shape of, like, teardrops, and they're various sizes, just kind of hanging from the ceiling uh, on these very thin threads, um, floating around this this room. Uh, it's it's a small room. It's cozy and kind of cramped. There's a lot of stuff in here, including a lot of um, cakes and pies and cupcakes that are kind of floating freely around the room in these little glass-covered serving dishes. And then uh, sitting behind a, uh, a table uh, and in front of a large round oven, uh, is a uh, a woman, uh, a human with a kind of rosy complexion, uh, wearing some. Uh, she's wearing an apron, uh, a cooking apron. She's wearing some white, uh, uh, sort of frilly robes. She says, uh, "Let me figure out what the fucking accent's going to be before I yeah, just kind of run into great. it." I, I wanted to do like Bjork. You need help, don't you? Well, yes, we do. You already know my name, yes. Introductions yeah. are not in order. Magnus Taco. Paloma, it's a pleasure to meet you. I am, I'm sure it is. Um, what can I uh, what can I help you with? We we come from outside the bubble. I know this. And we're here to solve the problems of refugees. I know. Wait, is this is this, is this the old woman? Uh, nope. Okay. I know these two. So what do we do? Hmm. We could consult a prophecy. Sounds good. Your friend doesn't talk much. He's a bit of a, a magical observer. You do seem very magical, Taco. I don't know. I just don't have anything to add right now. And hes I talked a lot to Rin, so I'm just trying to let him take the lead. He's, he's, he's being I mean, a it, good partner, Craig. If okay. you want, I mean, if you want everybody to shout simultaneously on our podcast, we can Please definitely do. Do uh, get that route, too. We're playing good cop, hungry years. cop. Paloma yeah. says, um, okay, well, I offer a small prophecy, and I offer a big prophecy. Which one do you think you would need? To give you an idea, the small prophecy... Uh, uh, Paloma's kind of here as a uh, a guide to help keep you guys on track whenever you need sort of advice, sort of like the fortune teller in the Zelda games. Yeah. Um, if you need sort of immediate direction, small prophecy is your jam. Uh, if you need something, or you not need, but maybe want to know something a bit more big picture, a bit more long term, that would be a big prophecy. Um, she says uh, uh, it's it's easy one diamond for small and ten for big. Okay. Paloma, yes? we do not have any diamonds. Oh, that is unfortunate. But we are looping through this world in such a way that when we come back, we will have diamonds I for know you. there was something strange about you. Yeah. So this is not our last time, or I would guess our first time here. Hmm. That and is an w- interesting proposition. You're saying in the future, you will have no. diamonds for me. No, not exactly like that. No. Um... We'll have them now, later. (laughs) We're getting in some Bill and Ted shit, and I love it. We will remember to have some diamonds for you you when we're here now. Do you have anything magical you can leave with me? I like to collect a trinket, something I can maybe help uh, cook with. um, Do you ever cook with alcohol? Sometimes. Rum cake, buttered rum. I have this magic tankard. Ooh, that increases the potency of um, alcohol. Yeah, she accepts that as payment. Uh, right. I've she never says, used will, it. I will do small prophecy for you for this. That's not worth a big pro- Paloma. The big prophecy is ten diamond. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. okay. Not for a small not, prophecy. Not for a little cup. No, no, Magnus. So Griffin, I have a question before we move forward with this. It's a cup. It's a magic cup. Um, when this loop resets, is the cup gone? You don't know. Oh no. Um. She uh, she invites you to sit down at this table. There's a little bench with a rug over it. As you sit down, the room kind of like goes dark. And it's not like any lights went out. It's just kind of like darkness kind of filled the room up. Um, and uh, you can see Paloma. Uh, her, her oven is still on. Uh, and there's something fucking intoxicatingly delicious being baked in there. But it's also providing some backlighting for this scene. And uh, from the ceiling... Uh, a small one of those crystal teardrops falls on the table and shatters, and the dust kind of hangs in the air. And you see, uh, in in this cloud of dust, 
you see what looks like the entrance to a cave or something. It looks like the, the not a cave, because it looks more man-made. Uh, and it is, uh, w- whatever has happened there, There's there's been like a cave-in. Uh, and this entrance is completely surrounded by rocks. And she says, um, and, and her voice sounds a bit different now. As she's like in prophecy mode, and she's no longer like looking you in the eyes. Uh, and she says, uh, Imminent destruction comes from below. Before you can learn how to stop it, you must figure out what it is you must stop. Turn your eyes to the quarry. You're not ready to face what awaits you there, but you must know its face. And then the light Man, comes I back. I was going to go to the quarry anyway. Um, like, what, a, what a ripoff. She says, uh, is that all? Is there anything else? I, if, you, if you give me something very valuable, maybe, 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 I will consider a big prophecy. But you better come back on those with those current future diamonds. You got it. I'm going to say, Trav, I think we should go ahead and bolt. We'll come across some diamonds at some point when we'll actually need this. I think we have some good leads to go on. Yeah, I think we need to. I think maybe we'll have some diamonds at the quarry. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Let's jump on over to Merle. Um, Merle, the, you see the boys run off into the woods. Uh, and as you walk past the jail and sort of turn the corner, you see... Uh, you you see Cassidy, and she is working her. She's she's walking towards the quarry. Um, again, there's a very tall wooden wall, um, and uh, uh, you see her actually when when you when you first lay eyes on her, she is scurrying up and over that wall, and then out of sight into the quarry. Well, shit. Well, I mean, <laughs> do I, it's not I, a I scurry <laughs> after. Her. I'm just not a good wall climber. Okay, that's fair. There is a gate that. Uh, you can you can see it's not like a, a walls all the way around. In fact, the road out of town actually uh, dead ends at this gate. It's as tall as the rest of the wall and as thick as the rest of the wall, but it has a, a large metal padlock um, on it. Okay, I walk up to that padlock and pull out the nitpicker. Okay, uh, yeah, you drop the nitpicker. What do we name the nitpicker? Anybody remember? Probably not. Um, you you put the nitpicker down. Um, and uh, it animates and comes to life and says, uh, where's your dumb friends? Uh, Bud. Is Bud, that's right. But Bud. Nick Picker insists that his name is Ernest. Ernest, yes. That's better. Ernest says, uh, where's your dumb friends? Huh? I don't have any dumb friends. <laughs> oh, I good do, good yeah, comeback. Yeah. Good comeback, guy. Oh, man. It's a regular <laughs> night at the Apollo here. And he uh, starts working on the lock. Uh, and says, uh, you always bring me to the nicest places, haunted uh, crystal uh, uh, torture chambers and uh, towns that explode every fucking hour. This is this is great stuff, Merle. I really enjoy living in your, in your bag. Hey, by the way, you've had an old sandwich in there for like a month. So do something about it. Hey, let me okay. a- let me ask you a question. You're going to return to the, that half-eaten box of Lunchables in there? Or what's the situation vis-a-vis the Lunchables? I feel like I'm doing a scene with Gilbert Gottfried. You wish. Uh, you got look, stinky meat in your bag, son. Fix it. That's- well, you, you've got stinky meat in your pants. Hey, nitpicker, ask him why he sounds like my dad and not his dad. Hey, you got stinky meat in your pants. Jesus, it's like you've <laughs> aged 40 years since the last time we talked. It's a lot of responsibility. This is just horrible. Uh, you hear a click. As the padlock uh, un- unlocks and the gate starts to give, okay, I back into him. the back into the stink bag I go, hooray! I grab him by the feet, I shove him back into the 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 pack, and I say, "Enjoy your stink meat, enjoy your stink meat, dumbass!" And you, from inside your bag, so from inside your bag, show. from inside your bag, you hear, "Well, maybe I will." And he shuts <laughs> down. Okay, yeah, the gate is unlocked. Um, I run through and I chase down Cassidy. Okay, you're just gonna fucking barrel barrel on through, or what's the what's your mo? Like, how are you? I'm I'm gonna approach her. I I have an idea about an opening. Then do it. Okay, uh, well, let me let me lay this out first. You you uh, make your way into the gate, and you see Cassidy, who is uh, she looks kind of suspicious. She's like creeping. There's a, uh, a kind of a ramp that like uh, folds in on itself uh, that goes back and forth as it lowers you down into the quarry because the quarry is a, a good uh, quarry is a good like eighty feet down from the level of the town. Uh, so she's making her way down this ramp, and you are above her. And from above her, she does not see you yet, but you can see her kind of creeping, creeping into this quarry. I I call out to her. Okay. Uh, excuse me, miss. 
Uh, Miss? She looks up at you, and she runs. She's just bolting. She's running down this ramp. I'll chase after her. Okay. She's she's actually yelling behind you. What do you want? Leave me alone. I'm here to help. I know you're in trouble. Is this yelling conversation happening while the two of you are like running back and forth yeah, down, this, me, me, down this stairwell? Basically, I'm here to help. I don't. I don't want your help. Just leave me alone. No, you don't want me to leave you alone. You're in a shit load of trouble, I, Cassidy. To, no, you're not some sort of goblin. Pan sent me. I don't know. Oh, like a pan. Where you go panning for silver and gold and diamonds? No. I like no, those. No, it's, it, it's a god. It's a god. And you need God's help. You, uh, she, she stopped yelling at you. And like, as you turn a corner down this ramp, you, you don't, you don't, uh, you kind of lost track of her. Uh, and you don't, you don't see her. And you're like a few kind of ramps down from reaching the bottom of the quarry. Wait, we have the sons of fire speech, right? Yeah. Uh, Merle, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so the witch told us apparently there's something like super scary and dangerous that we're not ready to fight in the quarry. So you should probably like stay out of the quarry. Just a heads up. <laughs> okay. Are you going to heed his instructions or keep following Cassidy down into the quarry? I, I'm going to keep following her. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you make your way uh, down to the bottom of the ramp uh, and you don't see her anymore. What's your passive perception? What is that under? Your skills? Oh, um, plus three. Uh, okay, I rolled a stealth roll for her, and it was not good. You hear uh, the sound of uh, like soft sand crunching uh, behind you um, from from like underneath the ramp that you just ran down. Uh, it sounds like someone's about to get the drop on you. <laughs> I'm going to make a bold move and turn around. Okay. You see Cassidy. She's got a big shovel, and she's like has it up in the air and sees you and says, uh, Oh, dang it. Okay. Listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing here. I don't know why you thought it was okay. Just follow me down in the quarry. I'm a little bit jumpy. Yeah, and I, you know what? I don't know you. Who are you, mister? I lift the Extreme Teen Bible. I smile at her gently. And I sing. Hello. My name is Elder Merle. And I would like to share with you okay. this most amazing book. She brings the shovel down <laughs> directly on the it's top of your head. Extreme Team Bible. It will solve you, your problems. Do Clinton, you want to take a look? You just got clocked by a shovel. Uh, 24 <laughs> versus your AC. <laughs> oh, that was an amazing visual. <laughs> my, my AC is 18. Uh, she hits you for 19 points of damage. Uh, and you are, uh, stunned. You, you kind of topple over backwards and she runs off deeper into the quarry. Uh, and you hear an explosion coming from the town above you. Pan loves you anyway! Uh, <laughs> she has gone into the quarry. Uh, Magnus and Taco, uh, what are you guys doing? Taco, I just had an idea. Piggyback ride. Yes, I'm on to it. Uh, that's step back. one. And I start running towards the town. All the while, I'm yelling my plan to Taco. Okay. A lot of we, running while yelling. It's like a fucking like, high-octane Aaron Sorkin piece yeah. in this motherfucker. <laughs> we need diamonds, right? Right. And the bank just got blown wide open, right? Hell yeah. All right. Um, so hey, we're, we're wait, running for wait the Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We need to get there fast, right? Yeah. And time's about to reset, <gasps> right? So I can just start fucking burning spells. Yeah. Let's get a ride. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> Yo, what's up? Uh, man, I'm, I'm assuming Geralt's going to be in basically every episode of this arc. Y'all going this point. to the bank or what? Yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. Punch it. Okay, you mount up. Who's in front? Uh, well, I, that would be me. I'm the only one who can control Geralt. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, yeah. Wild you, stallion. You mount up and run to the bank. There is, uh, the. you get there quick. Like, like Is that a bubble shit? This place is crazy. <laughs> you get there in like 45 seconds. There's a guy uh, laying on the ground who's just been terribly burned, and you hear the sound of fighting coming from inside. Okay. We run in. Or okay. at least I do. Okay. I'm good out here, but Gerald and I are going to keep watch to see what happens. <laughs> uh, okay. You run in, and you see Roswell uh, handily beating the shit out of the, the other guys in there, and you see... The guards uh, dead. You see some uh, some ruffians dead. 
and uh, you see the dwarf woman in the back of the room uh, who uh, is is really bad off. And uh, yeah, there's some diamonds like scattered across the floor. Uh, not like a lot. Not like the vault was blown open. Again, the vault is like still secure, a little bit scorched. But uh, there, the whatever was in the uh, banker's till or whatever it's called um, uh, got scattered across the room. Okay, I scoop up as many of them as I can. Okay, while the, while the fight is happening. Yep. Okay. Roswell sees you doing that. And it's like it sounds more like a taco thing. Roswell looks at you and says, uh, "Well, I sure am glad that Sheriff Isaac brought you guys in here to to help out. You're doing the Lord's work." Don't worry, I'll do better on the next time. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Fight those dudes. Fight those dudes. You say that as you like, walk backwards out of the burning bank. Well, hold on. How many diamonds do I have? Uh, you, you picked up all the diamonds that are around the room. About You have about 20. Uh, no, right. you know what? You have a lot. You got about, uh, you got about 50 diamonds. Great. You scoop While up. I've got those scooped up, I put them in my bag, I assume. Okay. And I'm going to run and go well, grab he... the dwarf woman. Okay. Wait, this is really important. While he's doing that, Taco, having figured out that time's about to reset, it just fucking blasting spells into the air for no reason. <laughs> okay. Just like wall of force, wall of stone. Okay. Everything. Just like blowing out spells out of his wand. All right. You're doing that. Uh, Merle, uh, you kind of come to, uh, and from your position on the ground, uh, you see Cassidy, who is now, uh, she, she walked to the right after she knocked you out away from, uh, if you consult the map, away from the entrance uh, deeper into the mines. Uh, now she's walking towards that entrance, which you can see is a looks like a man-made uh, entrance. There's some wood framing uh, that looks like it's been caved in. Uh, Cassidy is holding what looks like a giant cluster of green grapes, but they're not grapes. They just kind of have that shape that is attached to a long wire with a plunger. Uh, and she is walking over to those rocks and uh, uh, starts fiddling around with that, but you are still pretty much incapacitated. You could actually uh, do a uh, do a Constitution saving throw. Great, it's a three. Okay, and with my modifier, no. it's a six. Yeah, you're you're still stunned. Um, uh, okay, Magnus, you you pretty easily uh, get get through the fight, and you grab the dwarven woman and and bring her outside, and she says, "Who the hell are you?" More importantly, what is your name? My name is Brogdon. Great. Great. <sighs> I set her down. Okay. Uh, you, you set her down, and she just kind of passes out uh, on the ground. It is, uh, you, you hear the fighting inside kind of stop, uh, and right, pretty much as soon as you get her outside, the bank collapses again with Roswell and everybody else who is inside inside of it. I will definitely get Roswell next time. Okay. But now you have 50 diamonds. All three of you from your relative positions. Actually, Merle, your, your position's a little bit further away. All three of you go through, essentially, the thing that just happened again. You hear the clock chime, starting its countdown to noon. Um, and right as it hits that 12th chime, the clock tower, which is on fire from the bank, snaps in half and falls over into the, uh, the elder's manor, destroying it. Um, and the ground kind of swells up as cracks form and heat starts to, uh, push out from the, uh, um, from those cracks. And then just like that, the ground compresses and it pulls you down in with it, uh, killing you, Magnus, and killing yeah. you, Taco, pretty quickly. Merle, you are also, uh, subject to this, to this, uh, catastrophe, although right before it happens, those rocks before Cassidy can do whatever she was doing to them, they get like blasted out by a wave of force, like buckshot from a shotgun. As the ground pulls you under, you are burned and you are crushed and you are dead. The end. We only actually got two chances. <laughs> and you wake up in that white space again. And the old woman says, somehow you did Worse that time. <laughs> you gotta move back to get forward. Uh, what is your name before you send us back? You don't get the chance to get an answer from that question as she kind of fades out. And you wake up again on the ground uh, in front of refuge. Oh, boy. First thing I do is check my bag. The good news is you've got your cup. The bad no news diamonds. is shit. you do not have 50 diamonds. 
Okay, well that answers that, huh? I'm gonna delete the YouTube video I was making about how to do an infinite diamond glitch in the adventure zone. <laughs> MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hi, I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Riley Smurl. And we co-host a podcast called Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. On our show, we tackle all of the hot teen topics that kids have on their minds today. Hot teen topics? Well, you know, the, the questions that are, that are plaguing teenagers through their tumultuous growing years. Questions like... How do I party? Or what do I do with all this hair everywhere? The same questions that people like Sydney had during their years as teenagers. Many, many, many. Okay, not that many. So, so long ago. Yeah, okay, I think they get the idea. So search for Still Buffering on iTunes or MaximumFun.org for new episodes every Tuesday. Still Buffering. I am a teenager. And I was too.